screen. I believe we're up to a hundred dollar. Is that correct? A hundred dollar bid for this wonderful thing, Mr. Uh, Mr. PK, who has 20 eyes, 20 different pieces of fabric, um, 20 different colors of thread, and took uh, Lori K 20 hours to make. Um, and then again, the proceeds go to a wonderful uh, organization, the Community Coalition Against Human Trafficking. So I want to encourage you to bid on that. We will award that bid at the end of this section. So finally, our last uh, presenters are from the Maker Council, the Makers Council. We have Ann Templeton and Forrest Kirkpatrick, and they are going to tag team from two separate locations. So this is going to be a lot of fun to see how it happens. Uh, Ann and Forrest, let us know when you are ready to start. Okay, I am here. Forrest, are you here? Uh, yeah, I'm here. All right, fantastic. Well, Matthew, thank you so much for that introduction. We are excited to be here. And yes, I'm ready. Knoxville's community is and always has been a city of makers. We've made dumpsters, Levi's, subway signs, farms, singers, and storytellers. And the Tennessee Valley, Valley has always made an impact. We've even been called the underwear capital, the solar city, the scruffy city, the maker city. Remaking is a constant theme. Led by the Mayor's Maker Council, the Maker City is an incubator for creative businesses. Here, makers go from honing a craft to running a successful business. And building on that growth, we're celebrating an evolved role for makers in Knoxville. They are providing creative leadership and solving challenges in new and innovative ways. The impact of makers during hard times isn't a new concept. Necessity is the mother of invention, right? We are all learning to do things differently and creating pathways in a world different than what we're used to. This could be the greatest opportunity of our lives. So I wonder, what do you make? The Maker City contains builders, artists, musicians, designers, and many more. In each of our own ways, we're all makers. So ask, what do you make? Sculpture, tools, jewelry, what do you make? Stories, songs, dance, what do you make? Systems, spaces, buildings. Through partnerships with groups like Dogwood Arts, Aramont School of Arts and Crafts, Knox Makers, Arts and Cultural Alliance, and UT, makers find voices and platforms for change. The Mayor's Maker Council's vision is to create a sustainable creative community, and I argue our greater Knoxville community is committed to the same. So there's a pandemic about. Uh, businesses and institutions have changed hours and spaces. They're weathering new modes of safety and trying to mitigate personal, financial, and consumer risk. And makers have been helping in innovative ways. We want to celebrate a few makers doing their thing in an effort to inspire us all. We're familiar with the iconic Tennessee theater. This institution is central to the arts community. Lila Honecker and her team have begun creating experiences rather than events and partnered with photographer Sean Pointer to allow us all the unique experience to stand on the iconic stage and breathe it in. It's nothing short of powerful. Postmodern spirits, they took a different approach and they met the growing need for hand sanitizer last spring. So we were all in the same boat, struggling to find things that would keep us healthy. We all experienced the bare shelves in the local stores and Postmodern took the pivot and provided fill up stations for the community and brought a little bit of peace to the craziness. Shora Foundation, they were founded by maker Tanika Harper of Harper's Naturals to create a safe place for children in under-resourced communities. When Knox County Schools offered the virtual option, it became clear that Shora would need to pivot from providing an after-school program to creating a space for kids to learn in a pod during the day. And then during the early days of the pandemic, Marcus Hall quickly applied his production team's expertise in denim and custom fit menswear to the task of mask making. He partnered with the Knox County Emergency Management Agency in March for volunteer to mask and donated over a thousand masks to the effort. Forrest Kirkpatrick worked with Nourish Knoxville to create hanging plexiglass shields to allow the farmer's market to continue in a safe and approachable way. And he also heard the call from Knoxville Montessori to create plexiglass barriers on their table. He created an environment that looks natural and intentional. 
body piercing artist Brian Thomas took a hit when his business shut down for two months. He's a member of the Knox Makers community and he sought out ways to help using his love for 3D printing. He saw a need with the uncomfortable nature of masks and found these ear savers. He spent his time printing and donated his work to Children's Hospital. In response to the Knox County School reopening plan that required masks for everyone in the school, this Beaumont Magnet Academy art teacher went to work. Cheryl Burchett made masks for the entire faculty and support staff, and this bear with a rainbow was a reminder that they were all part of the Beaumont family, even after months of being apart. Knox Makers is a long-standing maker space with a dedication to creative thinking and problem solving. In response to the need, they 3D printed a symbol and delivered over 450 face shields, 500 mask relief straps, and sewed over 500 face masks. Isaac Merkel declared it teamwork at its best. And then again with Spark, an organization dedicated to helping people with disabilities, created a collaboration of beautiful proportions with the Foothills Craft Guild and Knox Makers. They will adapt over 100 toys for children who don't have the use of their arms, and they're currently working on creating a therapeutic light table for one family. So our September nights were brighter because of the Tennessee Theater's determination to continue to bring music to us all. In response to the need, Big Slate Media provided the videography for the Ghost Light series. In a continued effort to provide experiences, this combined some of the best of Knoxville's musical talent with the beauty of the theater. And these are just a handful of stories about people and organizations who have created and contributed to a better way forward, to see this day's opportunity and to embrace this moment to evolve. We thank all of you because we've all had to adapt, pivot, persist. Our community has a well of creative leaders that are rising to the top. Makers see the world differently and these makers have worked now to help adapt of their own accord. So what's next? But what's next is to join together as makers to promote our culture of shared values and competence. We celebrate our shared moment of history and we create a society of more value. Looking forward, we rely on new experiences that we will create together. And when we look, when we look back on this time, we'll see that through compassion, resilience, and a spirit of collaboration, we met the challenges and we together entered a new era of culture and creativity. So again, let us ask, you know, what do you make? Sculpture, tools, jewelry? Do you make stories, songs, dance? Do you make systems, spaces, buildings? But this community, this Knoxville, we make that together. Hey, Forrest and Ann, thank you so much. Um, I think what excites me so much about um, the Makers Council is like, we've always loved your beautiful things in our homes, whether they're, they're vases or chairs or tables or things that we hang on our walls. We've always loved those. But what excites me is that you are actually looking at solutions now uh, to larger problems. So we get these beautiful things that go into our homes, but we also get these beautiful solutions um, to the issues that we are facing today. So. Thank you for sharing about that. Um, as we wrap up here tonight, I think on the Facebook thing, we're gonna see a, a winner and we're gonna go ahead and call it. Um, we are going to see that this wonderful creature, Mr. Uh, Mr. PK uh, has been awarded to uh, somebody for $120. And that $120 will go to the, uh, the Community Coalition Against Human Trafficking, which is exciting. Um, and for Lori Kay teaching um, some folks, some young people from that, um, how to make these beautiful monsters with materials. So we are excited about that. And uh, with that said, that's our night. I wanna thank everyone for coming out.